These are not birds or insects. They're bats, the only mammal that can truly fly. And this is a huge colony of Mexican free-tailed bats in Mojave County. It's one of Arizona's 28 species of bats. Some live in abandoned mines and caves, while others prefer the forest. Yeah, I tagged two down at this hawk's nest, or tagged three, so he should be down there looking for them. Aaron Saunders is a Northern Arizona University graduate student of forestry who's studying the bats of eastern Arizona that live in dead or dying trees. Here, these bats are really small. They're maybe the size of two or three Hershey's Kisses. With that kind of comparison, you might have guessed that Aaron is sweet on bats. I just love bats. I think they're probably the neatest mammal. Now, not everyone shares her passion. <laughs> no, not even a little bit. <laughs> but Saunders just might change their minds. Actually, their guano, their, their poop, is great for gardening. <laughs> if you have a vegetable garden, it's a really great fertilizer. So there's some really cool things that they can do for you. For instance, free pest control. In fact, some bats consume their body weight in bugs each and every night. Bats also pollinate agave, the plant used to make tequila. So if you like margaritas. <laughs> I told you she was persuasive. I can usually get people to change their mind about bats um, after chatting with them and getting them out here for the bat blitz. Do we have a bag? Oh, yeah. Ah, the bat blitz. Seven bats were tagged last night. It's a um, week a of bat bliss for dozens of volunteers. Yeah, they're here for the bats. I'm glad you could come out. Yeah, they're, they're here to help us uh, work on this project and to locate a lot of roosts uh, in a short amount of time. They're helping Aaron and NAU forestry professor Carol Chambers with a field study of tree roosting bats in the forest surrounding the town of Alpine. They want to find out how bats react when their habitat is badly burned by wildfire. And this is the perfect laboratory. In 2011, the Wallow Fire scorched more than a half million acres of Ponderosa Pine Forest, making it the largest wildfire in state history. So the Apache Sitgreaves National Forest has funded us to come out here and um, find these bats, mist net, put transmitters on them, and then track them to their roosts and see what kind of trees they're using. So are they using fire-killed snags or are they using unburned uh, snags? So, and a snag is a, a dead tree that's standing. I'm guessing the bats are coming down drainage and then they'll be approaching through here. The Arizona Game and Fish Department is an important partner in this project. Not anybody can go and put up nets and catch bats. It, you have to have a permit. Uh, bats are protected by law and therefore uh, we're here to assist them by going to multiple sites on the same night and catch as many of, of the target species that they're looking at. People want to know about how bat populations are doing and it's just very difficult sometimes to answer some of these questions. The age we live in where so much information is at our fingertips, it seems like we would know, but there's so much that we don't know about bats. And it's, one of the reasons I really enjoy studying them because they're, they're just such interesting creatures. They're challenging to study. You know, if you think about it, you, you know, you've probably never seen a bat up close unless you're out netting them like this. This is what we call a triple high net. The plan is to place mist nets near sources of water that bats are likely to visit after sundown. The bat comes down to drink, gets caught in our net. And that's the whole idea around mist netting for bats. Bats certainly can echolocate depending on the surface area that, that's there. Any kind of movement, any kind of clutter, clumping of the net gives more surface area for the bat to detect during the echolocation. So what you're trying to do is get the net stretched where you have the least amount of surface area for that echo to, to hit, or the sound to hit and the echo to come back. With nets in place, the various teams now must wait for nightfall. I think this is a good sight. I like it. We catch a bat. We're going to take the bat out of the net. 
And this is a big brown bat. The scientific name is Teskis fuscus. We always say fussy fuscus because they chatter a lot when they're caught. We're gonna take it up to the processing station. Bat number one. We're gonna process it, so what we're taking is a forearm measurement. They record data for every bat that's captured. We sex it, we identify it to species. This is Allen's lappet browed. Oversized ears. So hoary bat, they're one of the Halloween bats, so very orange wings. We weigh it, we look at the overall health condition. You have an elbow down here, out to a wrist, you have a thumb, and then the elongated fingers that make up the wing membrane. They knock insects, they knock them with their wings down into that, they catch them in this net, pull it up and eat it, all in flight. I'm gonna need a swab on it, for some species, they use a buccal swab to collect DNA. Can't be fun. The primary goal is to attach tiny radio transmitters to certain reproductive females. It's like wearing a little backpack, although it's glued on. You're free, and he's off. The transmitter allows researchers to use radio telemetry to track the bat back to its maternity roost. That way they can see what types of trees and surrounding habitat the bats are using. And we're finding that bats are using burned trees. The results of this study indicate that wildfires, at least in the short term, do not appear to have a major impact on bats. In fact, some species seem to prefer living in the burned parts of the forest. We can give that information to the forest to set management recommendations. It's information that may help the Forest Service decide how to go about removing burned and hazardous trees. This is just the first piece of a, a potentially very large project in the future. Aaron says there's much more to learn and plenty of reasons to care about bats. There's just so many cool things that they do for our ecosystem that I don't think people realize. This is good guy. You were very cooperative. Thank you. So I think they're a lot nicer than people think they are. <laughs>